So now let us look at the circulation types. There are two major types of circulation, single circuit circulation and double circuit circulation. And in human beings, we observe the double circuit circulation in all mammals. That means in completing one cycle, the blood flow through the heart twice, two times. Means the blood circulation has got two circuits. That is double circuit circulation. We will be seeing the circuits when you are playing some racing game, you will find some track in a circuit. And in physics, you study about the circuit. Circuit means it is a complete track through which the object passes. So here the blood it flows through a circuit. If you see the single circuit circulation, the blood is pumped by the heart. The heart it pumps the blood to body parts. From the body parts, it comes back again to the heart. So that's all, only one single circuit circulation observed in smaller animals like fishes. But whereas in higher animals we find double circuit circulation, here you will find two circuits. One circuit is between heart and lungs, the other circuit is between heart and body parts. Blood is pumped by the heart to lungs for purification, that is for oxygenation. Again from the lungs the blood is collected by the heart. The same blood is supplied to body parts, again from the body parts the blood is collected. So in this way there are two circuits involved in it, so it is called as double circuit circulation which is observed in human beings. Now let us look at the lymphatic system. Generally when we are studying about circulatory system, we mainly focus on the blood, heart, blood vessels. Because it is an active system which actively transport various materials of various states, like either gases like oxygen carbon dioxide, either liquids, either, either solids like nutrients, carbohydrate, amino acid, protein, fat, everything. So blood is the main system we consider, but when the blood is supplying these materials to the cells, they are using some part of the material and at the same time some water is supplied to the cells. Some kind of uh, nutritious materials are supplied to the cells. But from the cells, is that liquid taken back by the blood again? Sometimes not. So the materials which are supplied to the cells, in turn the cell it gives out the carbon dioxide, it gives out some waste materials which passes out through the cell membranes by diffusion and osmosis. But certain materials will be, certain fluids will be left back in the cells or intracellular space means the gap between the cells. Between the gaps of cells some intracellular fluid is remaining. This intracellular fluid is also taken back and kept in the transport system, circulatory system. Who does the function? That function is achieved by the lymphatic system. Sometimes like when there is an injury, you will find some swelling. Sometimes uh, some elders they say that there is some water in their leg, their leg is swollen because of water. So from, the, uh, from where does the water comes? In general in Telugu they say it as a uh, Niru Patadam, Chetulu Niru Patadam, Kalu Niru Patadam. So what does it mean? From where does the water comes? Into the hands, into the legs. So that is the intracellular fluid. Between the cells some fluid is accumulated. If you travel in a bus by keeping your legs down, not moving for a long time, generally it is observed in elderly people. The legs appear a bit swollen and they find it their slippers are very tight because that swelling is because of the accumulation of water. That condition is called as edema. Edema. Edema is a condition where the accumulation of water takes place in the intracellular spaces. So because of the lymphatic system, the extracellular fluid is taken back into the transport system. So we have some lymph vessels and lymph nodes present in our body. But the lymphatic system is not active transporting as like the circulatory system. Circulatory system has got heart. So actively the heart is pumping, so the flow is very fast, the circulation is very fast and it moves always. But the lymphatic system is not having any such pumping organ. Then how does the fluid flows in the lymphatic system? What makes the lymph to move or flow? So the lymphatic system it contains a liquid called as lymph. What is the difference between lymph and blood? Blood is a liquid which contains cells and solids. Lymph is a liquid, lymph is almost like blood, 
but without any solids without any cells so without any solids it is the clear fluid is called as lymph what makes the lymph to move in the lymphatic system lymph vessels the only thing is your muscular work that is the reason people are advised to do some physical exercise why without doing exercise also blood circulatory system can supply the blood to various body parts because heart is pumping then what about the lymphatic system it is totally dependent on your body movements that is the reason you are asked to perform yogasana you are asked to perform certain exercises so when you do different exercises when you move your bodies the intracellular fluids which are there they will be moved into the transport systems sometimes they carry certain substances which if they are accumulated over a long period they may cause so many ill effects on your body so the lymphatic system will be made active and your immunity is increased your body is active when the fluid is retained back that is done by the muscular movements so the muscle movements help the lymphatic fluid to flow and to take these extra cellular fluid that is found in between the gaps of the cells that fluid back to the blood a transport system so that is the importance of the lymphatic system and lymphatic system has got so many other functions which helps in your immunity and there are different uh, uh, points called as lymph nodes at different places of your body which have their roles you will be studying in your higher classes about the lymphatic system